why? Why should I build an online community? Why, right? An online community is, in my opinion, the only way that you are going to elevate your brand to that next level. It's really gonna help differentiate you from everyone else. Because at the end of the day, literally everything's a commodity, but a community is something that makes you stand out. All right, so I know it's really important to not always be focused on selling. Rather, take the time to position yourself as an expert. This will be a great way to give back to your community, your fans, your customers. So think about that when it comes to what you're focused on. Right, and like you say, and previous episodes, if you've been following along, you don't want to sell, sell, sell. You want to... Tell, tell, tell. Super corny as it is, it is the truth. And while you're doing that and you're telling and you're positioning yourself as the expert, mm -hmm. it also gives the opportunity of really learning about your audience because you're engaging with them, you're talking with them, you're learning about really what they're doing. And because of that, you're figuring out, cool, what are their actual problems? What are they wanting? What are they needing? Then with that, that's free market research from your community that you can really dig into and figuring out, cool, what's next for your brand? What other services can you offer to really elevate that? Yeah, I mean, your customers can show you a lot and enlighten you on a lot of things to help actually benefit your business in the long run. That is a great point, which leads me into the first tip, and that's really to make it all about the people because I love that. without people, you have no business. Without business, you have no money, and then you're broke, and then you can't eat pizza all day. <laughs> It's a tragedy, tragedy. You know? but you really need to make it about them and figuring out what they need. Going into that, mm -hmm. I strongly encourage your group to share. I, I often speak to this when talking about social media, like, hey, social media is rad because it's not a one-way street. It's not a walking billboard. It's a two-way street. So encourage comments, feedback, just like we do here on the journey asking a comment below, right? And you can do the same thing, have polls, especially with Instagram and how engaging stories are. You can throw up a quick poll or a question or a quiz now too. And just ask your audience a random question that relates to your business, gets them involved, gets mm -hmm. them engaged. And now it's not just a one-way street. We're just yelling at another person. They're like, stop yelling at me. Exactly. We're actually talking. All right, now another way we can really encourage our community and build it and boost it is to recognize our group members, right? Ooh, good tip. They're, they're putting in the work, especially if like you're a coach or if you're teaching something online, you have people learning how to do whatever you're doing, right? Show their progress. I know there, there's a person by the name of Lewis Howes and he has a Facebook community group and he has masterminds and inner circles and all that stuff. And I'll talk about it in a little bit. But one thing he does really, really well is when one of his clients or his followers are doing something like just super great, he'll give him a shout out like, hey, Margaret just launched her new book. Everyone give her a shout out. Way and everyone's go, like, yeah, that's awesome. Love your new book. And that's not something you have to pay for. You're literally just giving a shout out saying, hey, I see you. I want to recognize you. And I want everyone else to know how awesome you are. So that that's super impactful and powerful just to give them a little kudos. All right, so this is a perfect time to bring up the importance of setting the tone for the culture. Lead yes. by example. So don't go and ghost people on your social media just because, I get it, you're busy, because then you'll lose the engagement of your fans and followers. So set the tone. Be sure to be engaging. Be present. Dish out some quality content. Think about it even in your social life. You know, you stop inviting your friends to go do things and you stop reaching out. They start to think, oh, this friendship it's just done. It's done. So perfect segue, right? So leading into my next tip is to really be consistent with your audience. And what that consistency is, is really up to you. You don't have to post every single day, but you do want to be consistent. So if you want to make something where every Thursday I'm going to do a Facebook Live or every Friday I'm going to do an Instagram post. Ooh, or every it, Tuesday. Tip Tuesday. I thought you were going to go with Taco Tuesday. Or Motivational Monday. I'm still about Taco Tuesday. But anyways, make it consistent. Make sure that they can expect it. Now, back to Lewis Howes. He has what he calls an inner circle, which a lot of people call it, rather. Uh, that's basically a little mastermind group of his community. And once a month, he goes on with his community on a video hangout, right? So cool. he goes and talks. What do they do? They talk to each other. They say, hi, how are we doing? Do like little icebreakers. Then he usually has like a special guest that goes on and like teaches his audience something super cool. He'll usually have like a Q&A session with some randomly selected audience members so they can really have that engagement. Super cool, right? But he does that, that every single month and his followers expect that so they know that this is happening. 
which also you keep doing it, continue to do it so that you get more and more people really bought into you because, man, this person's sticking around. They're, they're about it and I want to be about it too. And it's like what I was talking about earlier, setting the tone for that culture. Yeah. Another cool thing to do, challenge your community. There's this artist illustrator that I follow on Twitch and she does a whack, which is a weekly artist challenge. And it's super fun because you get to see these challenges live and it could be something as simple as like, draw a tree or right. try oil paints or screen printing. And then you get to check it out on the live footage and feed. Now with all this fun and game, right? What that comes with building your community, all these challenges, all this engagement, there is the not so fun part. And that is to set some ground rules and policies because at the end of the day, we want this community to be a really a safe place for everyone. So those rules, they don't have to be super strict, but they should be more common sense, right? Yeah, so like if you have a chat room, you want to make sure you're mediating that, making sure that there aren't any trolls out there. Block play the nice. trolls. Block the trolls. But Don't play the nice. troll toll. <laughs> the troll toll. It's been a while since you heard that, right? I've never heard that. Totally derailed you. But yeah, keep all the negativity out there. You want your community to be inspiring and you really want uh, the power of community is like bringing people together with like-mindedness, right? We're all here to help each other and that's what that community should be about. So those rules and policies are there to make sure everyone plays fair. But, and don't call me a delusional optimist, but what if I become too successful and I can't handle it all? Well, other than partying on your yacht, eating all the pizza from all that success, right? You're gonna need to get some help. And that help is going to come from your community. You likely already have people in your community answering questions, helping you out already. It's time to go back to what we talked about earlier and recognizing them and recognizing all the help that they've been giving and give them more of an admin type role in your community saying, hey, you've been doing an awesome job. I want you to keep doing it. Let's, let's go ahead and make this official. I wanna make you my admin. So now they're helping you with your community, answering those questions, talking to the people while you're partying on your yacht or growing your business even more and growing your community. And, and just having fun with it. Yeah, and then they can all join me on my yacht. Absolutely. Pizza for everyone. Or there's also ways you can outsource this. So if you don't have anyone really active in your community that wants to step up, you can't hire admins to go in and manage that for you. All right, cool, Neely. So now I know how to do it, but where do I do this? Wherever you want. But no, there are a ton of options that you can use to really build your community and it's really gonna come down to what your community likes, right? Because not every community is the same. Your community might like being on Instagram or Twitter, but others may just want an email. Mm. But one of the first places you can really build that community is just with an email newsletter. It's one of the, the earliest forms of community and simple as just sending a weekly email with all the updates, and then they'll res maybe reply back to your email and you really start that relationship there. But what I would recommend for this is try to make that email newsletter, especially in today's world, almost exclusive, right? Like that email newsletter is for this specific person trying to achieve this specific thing. Because if it's just an email for anyone, they don't really feel a part of that community, mm -hmm. you know? Definitely hear you on the email. I'm definitely a huge fan of it with the businesses that I follow and engage with. But also, let's not forget blogs. Blogs are a great way to also the tried get and true. To try to get the information out and also make it really easy for your customers to share. So one thing I love about GoDaddy is we have a great blog that we share a ton of topics, everything ranging from how to finance your business to how to start a business to or how to build a community. How to build a community. The description below. Exactly. Or how to be a master on Twitter. Point is, we put this information out there for the community and then we make it easy to then share across social channels. Yeah, and another way we can really build that at community is through a membership on your website. Now, if you're using WordPress or other popular applications, there's usually plugins that'll help you accomplish this. But Lewis House has that inner circle and that's a membership on his site that people go to that are just a part of his community mm -hmm. where he can share that content directly with them. So it's something that you can potentially do truly build that community with them. And another way to build your online community, forms, a great place to provide feedback, ask questions, and talk amongst themselves. Exactly. Bond with the community. Now, probably my favorite way to build community, and I'm a part of, I, I've lost count, is through Facebook and using Facebook groups. It's probably one of the easiest ways to connect all of your community members together because let's face it, 
everyone's already on Facebook already. So it's one quick share, one quick ad, and they're in. And now you can add your posts, your videos, your images, and just anything you wanna share with your community, you can. And the good thing, kind of like forums, is your community can actually talk amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. They can start their own conversations. And I've seen lots of relationships build within the community because they're all like-minded people. Some people end up becoming best friends to this community, which is awesome. Are you a part of any Facebook groups? Um, actually just part of one. It's like vegans in Southern California, which is very common, but I get to meet a lot of like-minded people. It's also a great way for me to learn of different restaurants to try because I recently moved from LA to San Diego and it's a three hour difference. A lot of people go, that's not that far. No, it's a completely different community. And so it was a great way for me to learn about where to eat, which farmer's markets to hit. It's super rad. And that's awesome. And there, that community is pretty specific to what you like and your business has a specific interest group, right? And that community wants to know more about what you do or the service you offer mm -hmm. and just the, the rest of the people that are like-minded, which is super awesome. All right. So I've heard a lot about Slack. I personally don't use it to build my online community. Maybe you could convince me otherwise, but what what's all about Slack? What's Slack attack? <laughs> what's Slack attack? <laughs> Always throwing random things to throw me off. I try to thought. <laughs> it but never works. It sometimes. You should see how many bloopers we have. But <laughs> so Slack is typically a messaging app, but I actually am a part of a pretty big Slack community out in Phoenix. So as you know, I love WordPress. I'm all about it. And there's a lot of little WordPress meetups and community inside of Phoenix. Now, instead of us having a Facebook group or all these different things, we just actually have a Slack group. So the entire community in Arizona is a part of that Slack group. So we talk about upcoming work camps, uh, upcoming meetups, just talking oh, about cool. new leads and work. How and hot it is there. Oh, we try not to talk about that because <laughs> it's always gross, right? But we're always talking amongst each other and only building that community there. And that's just a, a more unique way to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a different customer base or client base or whatever you call your customers. So if Slack works for you, if your audience is already on Slack, they're familiar with it, it's a good way and a good idea to really build that community in a unique way. So I get Slack. I can see where that's super Slack beneficial. Tech. Slack attack. I'm stealing that now. I can see where that'd be beneficial to get together some like-minded people, build the online community. I'm a little bit more about the IRL. What's IRL? in real life. Okay. So there's meetups. I know that's been super helpful for some of my friends who've moved to new cities as a way to like, you know, meet new people and get to know their area. I know my good friend Rye joined a meetup where it was like a paint and sip. Okay. So like you get to like have a little booze, paint a little picture and then get to meet people. Unless they're like really into their artwork and introverts, then you don't get to know them at all. But right. you, it's a chance to meet people. I know when I first moved to LA, LA's huge, right? So I also joined a meetup in a bunch of chambers of commerce, went and did some cool events, went to like arcades. One of the coolest meetups I went to was just straight up hiking. And that was awesome because I not only felt cool, I was out there getting active, but I right. met some people who enjoy hiking. That's awesome. And sometimes having those meetups or those events are hard to plan. What I've seen a lot of really successful people do is they'll piggyback on already big events. Mm. So like big events like WordCamp is one of them. It's a WordPress conference. People will have little meetups uh, the day after the day before. That way people are already coming to that conference. They're gonna basically piggyback on all that travel already, bring that community in and have their own little meetup, if you will, or a little conference or a little really get together they can really bring that community together, have that face-to-face -face time, and really just bond and connect. Yeah. Now, my last point with really building your online community is maybe think about some barriers to actually join the community because you may not want to have everybody come in. Limiting people from joining might actually be a good thing. And there's a couple ways that you can really determine how best to do that. The first way is just have an open-ended question, right? Or a couple of questions. I know that's super common with Facebook groups. They usually ask, why do you want to join this group? Yep. What are you going to bring to the group? Things like that. That way they know that you're not going to come in and just troll the group. And then maybe have a price point to actually join the group. That way you know the people that are joining. They're committed. They're committed. They're serious about yeah. being a part of your community. And you know that they're going to put in the work. Totally.
All right, I hope this video inspired you to go out there and build your online community today. We hope this video helped. Go ahead and smash that like button if you got some value out of this video. Add a comment below. Let us know if you're building your community right now. And be sure to subscribe. Also, be sure to ring that bell so you are the first to know when our next video comes out. This is The Journey. Thank you.